All right. Yeah, this is fine. Whatever. We're testing stuff today. Hey, that was so loud. Hey, hello, how are you? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Clay Hurley. If you've never been here before, we do fun art stuff here. If you have been here before, thank you for coming back. <laughs> As you can see, setup's a little different. I just got a new standing desk. So I'm currently in the process of moving my computer stuff off of the desk that I use to like build stuff on into here, into my bedroom. So that way it doesn't get covered in sawdust and various other random debris. So sorry if it looks a little boring. Also, I'm 3D printing something right now and my printer is so loud for some reason I need to figure something out with that. It's almost Halloween time. You know what that means? Halloween costumes. You know what that means? I'm dressing as Finn the Human from Adventure Time. I love Adventure Time. Adventure Time is great. Loved it since I was a kid. I watched the Distant Lands spinoff. Haven't yet watched Fiona and Cake spinoff. Really want to watch that. The version of Finn that I'm kind of basing my costume on is like this version of Finn from the Fiona and Cake trailer. I just like the look of it. I think it looks sick. This is like Halloween costume slash last weekend of the Ren Fair costume. I'm gonna be wearing it there too. I feel like this is gonna be a longer video because I don't want to segment it into parts. Last time I did that, didn't perform too well. So we're gonna to try to do this all in one video. So sorry if it's a longer video, but it's either that or multiple parts. So without further ado, let's get into it. We're starting with the sword. The sword that he has in the picture, it has like axe blades as the hilt. I kind of looked for a file for this online. I couldn't find one, obviously. Figured I could model one pretty easily. I got this STL of a, like a hatchet head. I duplicated it, rotated it, stuck them together, cut some stuff off, took the two axe heads, made the hilt in mesh mixer, uh, made a handle and then made the pommel in mesh mixer. It was relatively simple because it was simple shapes like spheres, cylinder, and then the axe head I already had. Then threw it in Kira, printed everything, did a test fit, it all fit pretty well. Um, the smoothing sanding process is the same as my any other video that I made for 3D printing. I grabbed my rotary sander, sand it relatively smooth, get some uh, Bondo spot putty. I like to cover a good amount of it in Bondo spot putty. I just feel like I can get a good, like a smoother finish with it. I covered the ax heads and the pommel. I didn't really cover the handle because I'm going to be leather wrapping the handle later. Before I sanded it, I cut out the blade for the sword. This was five millimeter craft foam. It was the same craft foam I used for my uh, Renaissance chest armor. If you want to check out that video, uh, I cut out two strips. I think they were two inches by like 30 something inches. So once I got the foam measured out for the blades, I went outside, started sanding the hilt in the pommel, and then went ahead and sprayed a little bit of uh, filler primer. It's just like a gray primer that helps fill in the cracks a little bit more. Fit it all together. Um, for this one, I really just used some cheap and nasty Gorilla super glue. So for the painting of the handle, I did a base coat of black. Then um, I had a Krylon, it was like a metallic dark metal, I think it was called. It, it, it basically was just like a sparkly silver, like dark silvery sparkly paint that I sprayed on there. And it didn't look too great. So then I tried a different like silver that I had. It was more of like a hammered metal color. And that was just like too bright. The one in the picture is like a little bit darker, but it did have the like silver edges of the X. So I ended up taping off the edges with that silver because I did like that silver. And then I went back and uh, tried the dark metallic paint again with the like sparkles in it. It took five, six coats to get it to a good color that I wanted. 
but it was worth it. I think it looks pretty sick. As you can see, it the the paint with like the speckles in it left a cool texture that I thought was pretty pretty neat. And then for the leather wrap, guess what? It's the same leather wrap I've been using. <laughs> it's the same one I used for the Riptide uh, sword. It's also the same one that I used for my Renaissance foam sword. I just uh, spray painted it. I spray painted it like one darker brown, one slightly lighter brown. I end up painting over it with acrylic later because for some reason the spray paint like was still very sticky even like two days after I sprayed it. It was still very sticky. So I ended up painting it with acrylic so it would be more of a matte finish than a like a shiny finish. Here's me doing the wrap. Um, I cut like the end of it at a bit of an angle so I could lay it flush with the hilt and then try to do a consistent spiral down with the two wraps. I didn't cut them quite thick enough. I should have added a little bit more width to them. Um, and there was just a bit of a split between them to where you could see the handle under it, which I wasn't a huge fan of. Oh, and to adhere it, I was just using hot glue. So what I ended up doing was I continued with it, left the gap in between the two, uh, in between the two pieces of leather. And then I just went very carefully with my hot glue gun and just added hot glue into the gap. And I just thought it would add a cool texture to it. And then here's me painting over the leather with the uh, acrylic paint like I was talking about. But then I also do a black acrylic on the hot glue pieces. And I thought that turned out pretty cool. And I end up doing a black outline over the whole sword just to give it more of like a cartoony feel. I think it added a really nice touch to it. Now it's time to tackle the blade. The blade was more difficult with this one. Here we go, rubber cement. It's rubber cement time again. I got a whole new jar. Because of the thickness of the foam, I should have gotten a thinner dowel rod to put through everything, but I just didn't think of it. And so, with the thickness of the foam, it would kind of keep splitting, but I would just reapply more rubber cement and just like held it together as good as best as I could. And then just kept doing that wherever it would split open. And eventually I got all the spots and it all held together. So I just cut the tip of the sword. Now it's time for the worst part, sanding foam. <laughs> sanding foam sucks so bad. If you're gonna do this, wear like a respirator or something. I just had like my mouth and my nose in my sweater I was wearing. There was a couple times where I wasn't covering myself properly and I was just breathing in foam dust and it sucks so bad, dude. But you know, same thing I did for my Renaissance foam sword. Sanded the edges smooth um, and then with my uh, rotary sander, just added a bit of a bevel to it and then sprayed it with some Plasti Dip. If you've been here before, you know what Plasti Dip is because you've seen me use it on my other foam projects. If you don't know what Plasti Dip is, go watch my other videos. I explain it eight different times. I'm not explaining it again. <laughs> so I sprayed it with Plasti Dip, let it dry, and then I sprayed the Hammer Silver um, that I used, that I tested out on the handle. I didn't want like a bright, like shiny silver. Now I'm doing the black outlines on the blade as well. And there we go, sword done, moving on. We're gonna move on to the hat, why not? You can probably buy a hat on Amazon. I got a big head and I knew that if I bought a hat on Amazon, it would be way too small for me. So I made one, borrowed my grandma's sewing machine. <laughs> I don't wanna, I really don't wanna talk about the two hour process that it was to get the sewing machine working. But I ended up getting it working, but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, get like a white fabric. It could be like a felt. This I believe was like a white cotton or something, I don't know. There are templates of fen hats that you can get online for like free, I'm pretty sure. I don't have a printer or anything, so I just measured what I needed and then like free handed it. Cause I'm good like that. <laughs> And then laid it on the fabric, traced it all out. So the base of the hat 
I traced out twice. The circle top, I traced out twice. And then the ears, I traced out four times. So trace it all out, cut it all out, and then sewed it all together. I'm not gonna really give you like detailed descriptions on how to use a sewing machine, because I don't really know myself. I just put it in there, hit the pedal, and hope for the best. <laughs> so for like the base, like around the part hat, um, in the back, sewed the seam together, so it was all connected, uh, and then very carefully pinned the circle top around the base, and very carefully sewed that together, making sure that the wrong side, meaning the side that wasn't gonna be showing, was flipped inside out, if that makes sense. <laughs> Watch a sewing tutorial. I'm not giving you a sewing tutorial right now. Then I sew the ears together. I leave the bottom open so it's like a little pocket so I can stuff it with cotton. This is cotton that came out of my dog's toy that she tore up. <laughs> so I cut two little slits of where I wanted to put the ears. I should have put them a little bit more forward, but it's fine, whatever. And then I sewed the ears on simple. I also attached some Velcro pieces to the flaps so I can close up the hat. And then, like I said about the liner, basically I made the hat with the ears and then I made a second hat without the ears and then just kind of shoved them up into each other and sewed the edges together so it had like a liner in it. You know what? I'll tell you what, I'll, I'm gonna put a video in the description of the video that I watched of how to make this. There you go. <laughs> Whatever, sewed it all together, now I got a fin hat. <laughs> Moving on. For the backpack, I just ordered it from Amazon. It's a little smaller than I would've liked, but whatever, it's fine. I didn't have time to like make a whole backpack and all that. For the shirt, I found just like a light blue shirt and I cut the sleeves off of it. I cut the sleeves a little lower than I should have, and then I cut like the neck off as well, so you could see like the Jake tattoo that I was gonna be painting on. Um, and then I looked in the mirror and just kind of marked if, and then just kind of marked if I needed to go lower on the neckline or whatever. Look at that, look at that guy. For the jeans, I just had some jeans marked where I wanted the cuts and then literally just took some scissors, cut the slits, and then I took my X-Acto knife and kind of ran it across the edges and then I threw those in the washer and dryer, bada bing bada boom, distressed jeans. Welcome back to 2014. Boom, pants done. We're getting close. All right, now for the hardest part, the metal arm. This is kind of similar to when I made Bucky's arm from Falcon Winter Soldier. If you want to check that video out, I go a little bit more deeper into detail of how to do this. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown. Took some foil, wrapped it around my arm, and packing tape also wrapped that around my arm. Once you cut it, it gives you a good template of like the shape of your arm. Took the 5mm craft foam, traced it on there, cut it out with an X-Acto knife, made some adjustments. Uh, trim some stuff, you know, it's just a lot of putting it on, seeing how it feels, looking in the mirror, marking where you need to, cutting off what you need to, yada yada, so on and so forth. Then it's our old friend rubber cement to glue everything together. I also reinforced it with some hot glue, just because I didn't want it breaking apart while I was wearing it. Now for the like under glove, I bought these um, metallic gloves off Amazon, it was like six bucks. I used one of them as a glove and then the other one I used for like material to make, because the glove didn't go all the way up my arm, it stopped like here. So I used the other glove and sewed it to where it would come like up to here. So here I got like the bicep piece on with the second half of the sleeve, some Velcro, I'm just sticking some, some Velcro pieces in between the bicep piece and the fabric. Uh, it just helps keep the bicep from sliding down and helps it keep it up there. And then I cut some circles out of some scrap foam to match the circles that he has. Glued them on the sides of the bicep piece. And then on the glove, I just use a black Sharpie and I kind of draw out some of the lines that I see 
on his arm to give the hand more detail. And then there were these little detail pieces that I saw. Um, I literally just cut some strips out of poster board and super glued them on. Then that was done. Now it's time to paint everything. Placid dip, super simple. And then for this one, I did use just like a straight up silver. I wanted this to be a little bit more shiny. And then same thing with the sword. I do a black outline around the whole arm. So it gives it more of a uh, cartoony look. And then I sprayed a good couple coats of like a clear, um, of just like a clear Rust-Oleum gloss uh, coat. Boom, arm done. That means costume done. That means time for suit up. Let's go. We gone? What's up my little honey babies? <laughs> we are going to go ahead and start suiting up. The costume's completely done. Uh, it's time. As you can see, I already got my pants on, got my black combat boots on. He wears like, it looks like moccasins, but I just felt like black combat boots would look sicker. I think next we're going to put on the shirt. Oh, I was, my buddy who's filming for me was mad at me because I was late because I was painting on the chest tattoo. <laughs> it looks a little rough right now, so I'm gonna have to get like proper body paint. This is just acrylic paint, so it's kind of cracking, but whatever. <laughs> I see the, the paint cracking off. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use like proper body paint for the for this. Go ahead and do sword, backpack. I think I already showed this backpack earlier in the video. I stuffed it with my couch pillow, so it's a little puffy. But I liked it because it came with this little uh, strap thing here to put the sword in. Which usually during the show, he kind of just wears his sword in between his back and his backpack. But I thought this would be cool. But yeah, there's the backpack with the sword, the arm. All right. So for the arm, just put on the under sleeve like this. Oh, that's the wrong way. So the Velcro goes with these Velcro pieces on the inside of here. So they align. So we'll put one, two, three back here. Just line it up. Yeah. All right, that's good. Other glove. So I'm just kind of lining up these two little stripes right here. Open the Velcro. This, I'm so glad that I did this Velcro because I don't know if you remember in my Winter Soldier arm video, I didn't put Velcro here, like around here. So I would just have to like squeeze my hand through there and it sucked. And I think I ended up breaking it at one point. But yeah, that little Velcro just really helps being able to just slide it on like that. It doesn't have the cleanest seam, but I'm fine with it. I think it still looks sick. It feels awesome wearing this. I did not talk about these yet. At Renaissance Fair, they have a thing called trick or trading where you just like give out little things. If you like someone's costume or meet someone you like, you give them little trinkets. So I bought these little bags, these little like velvet bags. This one, and this one I just have like little things, little Lego guys, acorns, some keys, you know, just random little things. And then in this one, it's like a bunch of Adventure Time stickers that I bought off Amazon. And then on the back of all of them has my TikTok and YouTube. And I'm just gonna be just gonna be handing those out to people. So these will just be kept right here in my little back pockets. I think this costume will be a little bit better than the King costume I was wearing because I didn't have pockets and that just sucks not having pockets. I'll put this right here. I'm going October 26th. It's like the last weekend of the Ren Fair. It's Young Adventurers and Heroes weekend or something like that. So I feel like this fits the vibe pretty well. And last but not least, piece de resistance. Ugh. This has pretty good mobility. 
It's just when you start getting up in this area, it gets a little restrictive. <laughs> there we go. That is the final costume. Da 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 da. Choose your fighter. <laughs> it's the final costume. Hope you guys like. Sorry, I'm really thirsty. I need to drink real quick, if you don't mind. Um, oh, also, here's some B roll. it made sense <laughs> if you have any questions about like things in the build um, I have videos where I made sort of similar things so you can watch those where I go a little bit more into detail I just wanted to keep this relatively short that's everything that was the costume turned out sick went swimmingly at the Ren Fair. had a lot of people complimenting me saying they loved it yeah I think that's everything if you like the video, make sure you like the video. If you like me, make sure you subscribe. You can see a whole lot more of me. Give me some ideas for what to like put up around here uh, to make it not as boring. Or if you want me to keep filming like this bit out there with the other desk, let me know in the comments. I think that's all I got for you. But thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Maybe ah. you give me ice and fire. You're giving me wings.